Hello guys, Winston here. In my rush to publish my last two videos, I glossed over everything that had been going on in my workshop as I got my XL Operational and my Stock 3 upgraded. So today, I'll be quickly going over what's happened in the past two months in between all my other projects. First off, let's talk about the Stock Shape OCO 3. Edward Ford sent me a rather heavy care package for the machine containing a 2016 Z-axis carriage plate and a threaded aluminum table. The new 2016 Z-axis carriage plate is visibly differentiated by being shorter than the 2015 plate, and several things contribute to the new version being markedly stiffer than the outgoing design. Vertical spacing between the V-wheels increased by about 2cm, making it much more resistant to rotational deflection. The steel plate wraps 90 degrees on each side around the Z-axis rails, dramatically increasing the cross-section's bending moment of inertia. And the spindle mount now goes between the V-wheels so it doesn't sit at the bottom of a giant cantilever. Installation is just a matter of swapping over your old hardware to the new plate and sliding it on the rails. If you don't have enough clearance between your gantry and the bottom of your machine, try taking off the bottom V-wheels first. If you have a machine from before July of 2016, this is a really worthwhile upgrade that's available through the Carbide 3D store, and they're selling it pretty close to cost at just $20. On the other end of the financial spectrum of machine upgrades is the aluminum table that's offered for the stock size Shape OCO 3. This is a 30 pound slab of half inch aluminum drilled and tapped for M6 hardware. It's $400 because it's a royal pain to manufacture and it's expected to be a low volume seller. If all you're going to be doing is hobby level woodworking, it's definitely overkill, but if you ever want to get serious with aluminum or do some crazy work holding that would overstress threaded inserts and MDF, then this might be something you want to look at. The aluminum table screws into the same hole pattern as the original wasteboard pieces and it's so solid that you can ditch the steel cross straps. Just note that if you remove them, your cap screws will stick through the bottom of your base frame and scrape up the surface of your bench unless you swap them out for shorter screws. I got some shorter zinc oxide coated screws to match the blacked out look of the table. Together, these upgrades substantially stiffen up my stock Shape OCO 3. However, because my DeWalt router was occupying my Shape OCO XL, I'd be reinstalling my DC spindle in the stock 3. The plywood shims I'd been using before just wouldn't cut it anymore in a machine this precise. So I made my DC spindle a proper bushing out of MDF. Using two rings cut from 3 quarter inch stock and glued together, I now had a reduction bushing that would support my spindle uniformly with the maximum possible surface area and minimize any errors in vertical alignment. Then, in preparation for a future project, I wanted to devise a way to clamp awkward shapes like blocks without getting in the way of an end mill from above. So I took inspiration from a clamping technique I've seen used on workbenches of woodworkers before, cams. Using eccentric rotation about a fixed axis and mechanical leverage, you can apply a sufficiently large amount of pressure to a workpiece to hold it with friction. Now you could get really fancy and customize the curvature of your cams to apply a precise amount of pressure across a certain amount of throw, but I just wanted a simple proof of concept. My design is basically just a round head, a handle, and a hole that's offset a few millimeters from the center of the head. I cut my cam and a stop block out of 3 quarter inch MDF and installed it on my stock 3. The stop block fits both the 50mm spacing on the aluminum table and the 2 inch spacing you'll see on my XL next. It works like a charm. Getting back to the XL, that pristine wasteboard needed to change. I couldn't keep using adhesive work holding. My plan was, as usual, to use my CNC to drill holes for threaded inserts. Since I had such a generous work area with the XL to begin with, I wasn't too concerned that my array of threaded inserts wouldn't extend all the way to the edges of my wasteboard. I could always drill in a couple extra holes by hand if needed. Using Fusion 360, I sketched up a single countersunk hole, created a toolpath for it, and then duplicated it in a rectangular grid with 2 inch spacing. And actually, before I did that, I set up a tool library with Carbide 3D's complete selection of cutters. I started milling out my hole pattern in my wasteboard, and you can see that I had one of Mark's early suck it prototypes on the machine with the dust shoe taped under the mounting arm. That was before he realized that the 2016 Shape Ocos were 2cm taller than the old ones, and the shoe didn't quite reach the wasteboard. My improvisation didn't work very well, so I just gave up on using it for this part. After I finished putting in all 128 holes in my wasteboard, I reached for my stash of quarter 20 threaded inserts. I figured out that a T40 head and a low torque setting on my drill would make easy work of the threaded inserts. It only took me a couple seconds per hole. And with that, the little machine shop of horrors was once again fully operational. I want to thank you all very much for following me on my CNC journey. There are a lot of things I'm learning as I go, and also from you guys who share your tips in the comments. I'll be back in a week or two with a project I've been waiting a very long time to share.